so hello and uh, welcome to today's uh, webinar uh, jointly hosted by mysafes media and second technology so in today's webinar uh, we are going to talk about uh, covid 19 uh, the global uh, breakdown and what lies ahead for the mice industry and the techniques and measures so today we have tried to get uh, some close friends in the industry uh, on a global scale so uh, just give you a small introduction of that so we today we have uh, paul colston uh, from uk he is the managing editor for uh, exhibition world magazine as well as conference and uh, meetings world magazine from london hi paul hi sachin good afternoon everybody nice to meet you e meet you Thank you. And uh, second in row would be uh, Amit uh, Chaudhary, Mr. Amit Chaudhary from ITW, uh, travel from Mumbai. Hi, Amit. Hi, everyone. Good to connect with you all. Then we have uh, Stella from Greece, uh, uh, from Impressive World. So Stella does multi-talented work uh, in and around the mice industry. Hi, Stella, if you can introduce yourself. Yes, sir. Hello. Um, nice to meet you, all of you. Thank you for the invitation. Okay. And then uh, we have uh, Mr. Bindeshri Prasad from FCM Travel, MICE Division. Hi, everyone. Hi, Bindeshri. Hi, Sachin. Hi, everyone. Hi. Okay. And uh, we also have uh, Jay, Jay from Sarcon Technology. So this is the platform which is uh, provided by uh, Sarcon to initiate this uh, conference. Hi, Jay. Hello, Hi. Okay. So uh, to before we start, Jay, uh, may I request you to you know uh, pass on some uh, briefing notes for everyone as far as the technology is concerned uh, about this platform. Yes, so I think the speakers have already been briefed. This brief is specifically for the audience that is there. Um, so you have uh, two ways to interact right now. So one is there is a chat box below your uh, video uh, stream. Uh, this is what you're going to use to interact with the other attendees. But if you have questions for any of the speakers today, or you, know, you want to uh, communicate with the, uh, uh, the event, uh, organizers, then you have a tab on your right, which will basically you know post your questions uh, directly on Twitter. Uh, the hashtag for this uh, event is mice versus COVID. That's M I C E V S C O V I D, and uh, you can either just enter it, enter your message on the panel on the right, or you can go to Twitter directly and you know put your questions there. Okay, thanks, Jay. So uh, just to brief you on the talking points, the first one we have is the global scenario and uh, the impact uh, of Karoda. Uh, so we have allocated three minutes uh, for three speakers in this. So uh, we were uh, expecting Mr. Om Pragaji from Inorbe Tours also, but uh, uh, due to some technical uh, uh, glitches, uh, he could not join. We'll try to play his video in between. So three minutes uh, and the second uh, session or the second question would be around the innovative uh, solutions uh, which uh, various countries various markets are exercising right now and uh, and the third one uh, which will be uh, on the mice club or uh, the technology initiatives by sacon and uh, the fourth round uh, which is an open round and uh, we'll be getting some questions from the audience or uh, a kind of open discussion and uh, then we can uh, you know a, a goodbye to each of us and uh, maybe we plan for the next event very soon so uh, give me this opportunity to start this session so uh, as you know uh, covid is impacting every country badly irrespective of the industry be it travel be it mice be it any industry it is getting impacted travel unfortunately is hit very first and as far as I know, it is the last one to recover as well. So uh, to understand the impact, everybody knows, uh, I mean, at least four of us know already what's going on in India market. Uh, 
so we would like to hear uh, something from our friends uh, from overseas market to start with paul first if you can uh, you know brief us uh, about the impact there and uh, what measures or uh, uh, you know different techniques you are adopting for the same thank you sachin uh, hello again everybody so a couple of months into the covid 19 outbreak and we have a crop of industry research on the effects uh, including from UFI uh, and the headlines from their mid-March update report um, on the impact of COVID-19 shows that it's 134 billion euros or 145 billion US dollars of contracts um, have not been concluded uh, due to events not taking place as planned through quarter two 2020. That's five times up on the quarter one figure that was uh, calculated by UFI. UFI also noted that 81.6 billion euros of total economic output would not now be generated related to the exhibition industry by the end of this second quarter. So marketplaces and industries rely on to trade are closed around the world. And this is unprecedented, of course. Uh, our global exhibitions industry is pretty much ground to a halt. Um, Regionally, uh, in the Asia Pacific, uh, the figure is 21.8 billion euros and th 378,000 full time equivalent jobs lost. Um, and that's just under the figure for Europe, which is 28.8 billion and 257,000 jobs lost. Uh, in America, it's slightly higher, almost 30 billion euros and 320,000 job losses. Um, these and many other stark statistics have prompted calls on governments for subsidies and credit support around the world. Denmark, I think, was the first one in there with a 12 million euro uh, plan for the tourism industry. And Australia is the most recent one I've seen with a 130 billion Australian dollar bill, uh, bailout for the wider tourism industry, um, which can be applied for. In the UK, we're one of the countries where Workers can go on a furlough for a couple of months at 80% pay, which will keep some companies in business. And uh, while postponements and cancellations are well documented, um, I'd like to point out one nice story, the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, where the delegates, some of them refused to go home. They stayed and put on events and tried to do business and sign contracts because that event was so important to their annual orders. And let us not forget the stand builders and contractors. A survey from the International Federation of Exhibition and Event Services backed up the UFI data and claimed um, that COVID had put at risk nearly 250,000 jobs in exhibition stand construction in Europe. Um, and 300 of its members are projecting that they will lose half of their annual revenue. Um, many of those stand contractors are small and medium-sized enterprises and fall through the trap, uh, cracks. And as the, uh, the MD of IFES said, trade fairs without trade fair construction, well, that doesn't exist. Um, maybe in India, the situation may be better. I understood from Mr. Ravinder Sethi that uh, uh, Wari Rogers and Ayala, that many large shows have taken place with the next biggest swathe in September. So maybe the calendar had been kind to you. And uh, I think I'm probably out of time, but if I just make a couple more points that um, our industry really provides the fastest of all tracks to any economic recovery. So the government measures mentioned earlier um, are really important to bridge li liquidity bottlenecks. And um, despite that, uh, many will become insolvent. We can't escape that fact. And uh, I'll save any other comments for later. I think that's probably my three minutes, Sajin. Right. Okay, thank you, Paul. So I'll direct the same question to Stella now. Stella, if you can brief us about uh, the market there and uh, maybe more updates on the impact. Well, uh, what I can... Uh... Well, I'm not going to 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 inform you to to to, to speak to talk about the, uh, the figures, the numbers. The numbers are well known, and this is uh, this is global actually. But I I would like to to focus actually um, into the point that. Um, 
we have all uh, accept uh, and uh, that life now is changing and um, this is uh, how um, and this is how we have to um, to focus uh, just Stella, I'm sorry just to interrupt you. I think your yes, video stream I... is not on. I'm sorry? Uh, I think your video stream isn't on. So you can just click on the video button uh, on the uh, center of your screen at the bottom. It is on, uh, but I don't know what. You cannot, uh, you cannot uh, see me? Yeah, we can't see you. We were able to see you a while back when we were testing it. So just in case you have muted your video it is it is open but it's it's flashing it's flashing um okay. i don't know maybe maybe the connection okay can on the top yeah I, mean, I can hear you perfectly so on the top right of your screen where the uh, url is there the address bar do you see any uh, icon that is there say red in color that's asking for permission or something like that well, I can see the screen uh, uh, flashing, not uh, not okay. to be stable. Okay, never mind. I think we'll just continue. But actually, it's open. I mean, I, I cannot do anything else. Okay. Okay. So, as I said, uh, I we have to accept uh, the new conditions. Uh, and uh, to realize uh, that um, our life now is uh, fragile and um, all of us uh, in uh, the mice industry and tourism industry uh, we have to be present and conscious that uh, we have actually to um, we have actually to to go with the flow and to see uh, what is the reality and uh, what do we have to to follow so there are a lot of things that we have to change in order to improve and uh, to develop the tourism and especially the mice uh, industry uh, which is actually very hard now it's it's hitting very hard so i don't know if we have uh, more time uh, to to talk about this uh, but um, it is essential to understand that uh, we have to everyone to understand that uh, we are part uh, of this uh, of this planet we are part of uh, of the whole so we have to follow the holistic uh, way in order to be able to um, to be in accordance with uh, all the Aegean uh, uh, um, systems that now suddenly we have to face on I mean wash our hands and uh, which is actually something very very simple uh, it seems that um, it is a lesson to learn but it's not only this anyway um, so I think that uh, it is about uh, a self-transformation and a business transformation as well. Uh, we have to focus on uh, on this and to to, to do a restart. And okay. to do a restart. Sure, okay. sure. Thank you, Stella. Yeah. Thank you, Stella. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I'll take uh, one minute. Uh, each for the Indian side. So I'll invite uh, Mr. Amit Chaudhary and uh, after that, Mr. Bindeshi Prasad uh, to, you know, abreast us with the latest uh, situation uh, with the Indian mice uh, sector specific to the travel and event industry. So we can start with Amit first. Yes. 
Hi everyone. Am I audible? Yes. Yeah. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, I know there is such a time which uh, no one uh, must have thought about in recent times. The travel industry has seen a lot of ups and down in uh, last so many years, but uh, this is something which nobody expected. Like uh, there have been a uh, slowdown, there have been a fast pace, and uh, we have been down, we recovered, but this time it's everything is standstill. So like uh, even when we are talking about the team working from home, there's nothing to do much other than uh, improving their knowledge about the destinations or enhancing their skills. This is what has what has been happening since last 15 days. Like uh, if you ask me, there's a lot of uh, companies, tourism boards, DMCs who are having online webinars to educate the staff, the teams. And uh, there has been a lot of participation, like uh, even if I see uh, some of the webinars, uh, they are always uh, the space because they always have a limited space. It's always full. So everybody is participating in that and uh, I'm sure everybody is upgrading themselves to face the situation once we are back in action, which I hope uh, has to be very soon because uh, however long the night might be, the sunlight has to come up. So I'm sure we all will come out of it. Right now, everybody says the earth, earth is healing. So I'm sure once uh, Earth has healed completely, it will give us time to heal ourselves and our industry altogether for mice, for leisure, for event, for everything. Thank you, Amaji. So very positive vibes coming in from you. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, I'll direct this question to Bindeshwari Prasad from FCM Mice. But uh, Bindeshwari has to speak out on the mice industry. Hi, everyone. Hello. Yes. Am I audible, uh, Sajjan? Yes, yes. Yes, you are audible. Yeah. yeah please. Um, if I have to say, I means the way uh, industry has changed means uh, it's it's changing very drastically. So um, there are some positive news coming in. There are some a lot of negativity as well. Uh, but the uh, the way things are changing, it's it's very very unpredictable as of now. So. Uh, if I talk about uh, January, it was just like a rumor, and then February it started uh, getting into different directions. So uh, we started uh, getting cancellation in terms of Thailand, Singapore. Uh, we were quite positive that Europe or developed countries will not have this kind of situation, and till even March first week things were very normal. So uh, it started turning around in March mid, and then things. Uh, come to totally stand still. Uh, uh, now, when whole world is stand still, there are some news just started coming from maybe Singapore and uh, China that uh, there are some domestic movement has started, not on uh, top of it, but maybe 10, 20% of the business volume has started resuming. So we have been talking to some of the DMCs, some of our partners, even on the airlines movement and other stuff, it has started moving. So. Uh, we need to be a little safe and uh, come over on the control. Once the control things happen at different places, I think the movement will start from domestic and then uh, it will move to the other direction. And MICE is totally correlated with uh, all other business activity. So if other business activity has to run properly, of, of course, MICE will start uh, improving. Uh, maybe the way of business might change a bit with uh, new understanding. Um, so that's what I have to say. Sachin, I'm not able to. Sachin, your voice is not coming. Uh, so thanks, Vinu. Am I audible now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now I'll invite Jay uh, from Sarkon Technology uh, to speak for uh, some time to update all of us uh, on the tech space, on the technology space, what is the impact, as well as uh, a brief on today's session. They have created a landing page with the, uh, with the agenda and everything. So if you can show that to us, Jay, please. Sure. Okay. 
Okay, just let me know if you can see my screen. Yeah. I think I can see that. that. Everyone can see it. Yes. This is basically the uh, online uh, screen that is there. Okay. Right. So uh, I think you know we have a you know, detailed presentation on the whole uh, platform you know, on the next half of this particular session. But uh, yeah, I think what I would uh, say is that you know from from that tech point of view, right? Obviously, so we are uh, uh, event technology company, so we deal with you know physical events. So obviously, there have been a lot of cancellations that have happened, uh, you know, across uh, geographies that we are seeing, you know, where uh, events power, uh, our technology powers those events. But uh, we are also seeing that uh, you know businesses are uh, surprisingly very, very willing to uh, you know try out new technologies to see how they can make the most of the situation that they have at hand right now, right? And I think this also had a lot to do with uh, an economic slowdown that had already started before COVID. So people had started working out on you know things like you know uh, webinars, virtual events, and all that. So you know the mental shift had already started happening. So you know we are we are uh, a little pleasantly uh, surprised you know that uh, you know people are uh, willing to you know try new things right now because the rules of the game have uh, changed. All right, yeah. Okay, so uh, we had uh, uh, another speaker, Sri Om Prakash Ji from Inorbe Tools. Somehow he couldn't join, but uh, he has uh, sent his message for us. So allow me some time to play that message. Uh, I'm just trying that. Just a minute. Okay, so can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, should I play it now? Yeah. Yeah, you can. Uh, Sachin, are you going to play it through uh, YouTube or uh, are you going to just show your screen? Can't you see it? No, I can just see your screen, but if you have the link, we can actually uh, enter it directly. Do you want me to do that? Let me let me realign this thing. Okay. Uh, Jay, so I'm putting this into the chat box. The link is there. If you yeah, can try yeah. that. Director of In Orbit Tours in India. This is Om Prakash Sahil, Director of In Orbit Tours in India, speaking to my trade partners, not only in India, but also trade partners from all over the world. At the outset, I thank Mice Affairs for organizing this video conference to um, uh, showcase the problems, the fears, the uh, uh, fears and various other um, uh, problems that our trade, travel trade has been facing. Jay, is it playing now? Hmm? Yeah, facing. Um, I have been the, uh, in this business for the last 40 years and also been the chairman of the Travel Agents Association of India, Western India for three years and the, uh, the problems faced in the travel trade industry. This has been a very unprecedented uh, situation. In the past we have seen many um, such situations which were only
different but this particular um, uh, problem that we are facing is a worldwide and it has impacted the whole entire world not only the travel trade but all the industries trade and people of the world i would like to um, uh, share some of the problems that we have faced you know uh, in the travel trade the business is started for promotion at least 3 to 4 months in advance hence um, in this year of uh, 2020 in perspective i would like to mention that whatever the travel trade has been doing the promotion marketing since uh, january uh, till date that is march uh, all the business that has been booked has been totally now cancelled and in this uh, situation we have uh, uh, been uh, uh, being regularly asked by the um, clients for refund of their money i would like to inform that this is a situation when all the um, uh, travel trade partners are totally without business i have never seen that all the world flights are grounded the hotels in the world are totally without guests the uh, companies are blocked people are sitting at home and uh, there is absolutely no movement in fact it is not only the trade view but also at the moment everybody's life is under a threat of coronavirus and people are equally very much worried first to overcome the uh, coronavirus uh, uh, threat and then later on when things become uh, normal think of restarting their business and you will very much agree that uh, the business community has totally been shattered because of no business and even their employees are in a um, difficult situation as far well because they are in, dependent on the companies i would also like to um, uh, stress that we have full sympathy for our employees as they have been loyal they have been depending on our um, uh, working of the companies and dependent on the companies but travel trade being one of the most uh, uh, competitive business with very less margins uh, is facing another problem majority of the travel trade um, companies are depending on the loans raised from the banks to survive with their day to day business and under these circumstances the all right i think uh, i'll stop the video right now because it's an 8 minute video what we have done here is we have shared this link with the audience in the chat fund so you can view the rest of the video of uh, mr om there and i think we can uh, continue with the panel discussion it's facing another problem majority of so sure. thanks jay so uh should i take it to the second question now yes please am i audible yes okay so the second question uh, uh, in under this panel discussion would be uh, on sharing the innovative solution which are various market exercising right now so uh we can start with paul about the uk market uh, uh paul uh, if you can recommend us uh, some of the measures which the markets are taking with respect to a uh, uh, revival strategy or things like that which uh, is useful for uh, others to follow yes certainly um there's a, a big problem about rescheduling of course and uh, some latest intelligence we had was that um Uh, as of the 23rd of march um 25% of organizers were deferring their shows to next year 2021 with 48% confirming a new date for this year and 27% uh, still to decide so this would obviously put big pressure on the calendar and i think it behoves us all to work together and put aside some some elements of competition and profile protection because these issues will come to the fore as there's a a race for limited space uh not least because um 
uh, some of our big centres in the UK, including Excel and the NEC in Birmingham, are being turned into hospitals, you probably saw on the news, uh, in common with uh, some big centres around the world. So some of the contractor material is tied up in those venues, at least until October, uh, where our National Health Service has the rights for those hospitals. In terms of technology, we have um, companies, uh, I would say, um, we're jumping ahead 10 years in video conferencing for people like myself, um, in particular the older generation. It, it's great to to suddenly have this thrust on us and to get to grips with it. So um, I think uh, there'll be a great leap forward, which will be good for the future. And um, it certainly has the potential to shift the whole market in this direction. Um, because up until now, I think virtual events and streaming had served more as an add-on rather than a replacement. Um, but who knows if one of the big shows that has been postponed or cancelled like IMAX Frankfurt, you know, if they went virtual, that would be a, a huge signal to the market. Um, I know they've got some plans, but uh, uh, we've got to remember that it's not just visitors who use the virtual technology for trade shows, but the exhibitors themselves. So there are two sides of that coin. And I think one last point I make is that you've got to be able to use it well, the technology, because it's much easier for a virtual visitor to exhibition booth one to move to exhibition booth two if you're not... Uh, uh, showing something interesting, you know, the attention deficit disorder kicks in very quickly virtually, I think, compared with the physical world. Uh, there's a few comments, hopefully, of interest. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. I think uh, quite interesting facts. And I think Stella would like to say something on this. I see you uh, saw you raising your hand. Stella, can you hear? Uh, Stella, are you there? Can you hear us? Hello? Yes? Yes, Stella. Can you yes, hear yes. me now? Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I would like to, um, to mention that uh, the meeting show event that which is a trade show actually in june is still alive they didn't cancel the event so it is an opportunity for the mice uh, industry to to have a restart in london in uh, by the end of june i hope that the situation uh, will uh, will be better very soon so will not be cancelled this event and that it would be a restart very, very very soon i'm uh, i'm positive about this uh, that's it so thank you very much okay thank you thank so uh, coming on to the indian part of uh, my uh, discussion so i would like to ask amiji uh, what would be your take on that do we as an industry has a uh, preventive measures or a recovery plan for the mice industry if you can uh, elaborate a bit on that. Uh, yes, Sachin, if you uh, ask me, as Paul has correctly said, that uh, the, all these cancellations and postponement will have a severe uh, load on year 2021, which will uh, note only the load because uh, the inventory is limited, uh, whether we talk about the hotels, all the airlines or anything. So. It's not only mice movements, it's even uh, the events, the leisure, the everything will come all together in 2021. I'm not saying it will double up, but it will be at least uh, 1.5 folds. So like 50% of this year will go in next year and next year will remain as it is. So we have uh, to find solutions. We have to start advanced planning for next year in consultation with our clients so that uh, there are no uh, over uh, spend on the budgets. And uh, they, 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 they get uh, a super experience in uh, terms of the budgets they have allocated for their mice movements. And uh, uh, again, uh, like as I told you, everybody will be craving for the business uh, in the coming year uh, or not in coming year, in the later half of the year when things settle down, which of course I'm sure will settle down. Uh, we have to be positive about it. And uh, that time, but again, uh, the thing is like, uh, 
we have to be ready like as i told you in my uh, previous uh, uh, session also that uh, we have to upgrade ourselves we have to upgrade the team like uh, every touch point we have for the customers in mice uh, should be uh, at least one level up when uh, they are back into the action after this uh, uh, covid is over and uh, they start their interaction with the clients they uh, reaching those touch points with the client yeah. so let's hope uh, every we have to be positive to come out of this situation and uh, as you rightly said that uh, it's not only travel it basically depends upon the entire economy how the industries perform how uh, the economy performs it's it's not only just about uh, uh, the corporates or the my travelers are uh, ready to travel it's they should be having budgets they should be having fundings uh and that's again not possible till the time they have uh, uh they are on the track again they are on the back track again uh, with their productions with their uh, distributions and which is possible only when we are out of this epidemic sure all right thank you so uh, same question to bindeshwari as well uh, as fcm is one of the biggest uh, travel firm in india or maybe globe as well uh, as far as mice and travel is concerned so uh, i am hearing from various parts of uh, travel corners that for some travel companies or some event companies it's a question of survival so how uh, you know big shots big companies are uh, coping up with the, this kind of problem in nishri of course different uh, measures have been uh, always taken discussed on uh, and situation is being analyzed day to day basis that how things are moving so there are as i said uh, there are some negative sentiments going on on certain market then there are some positive needs news also have started coming as i said that china market has started uh, transaction so uh, most of the other markets has stopped transaction but china market has started transaction Uh, there are some transaction going on even in japan and singapore kind of markets where few transaction are still happening so uh, how situation turns uh, for uh, overall uh, so if you if once the situation is in control then uh, if you look at either hotels or if you talk about airlines they also need to come on to their full fledged schedule uh, so what what based on the demand and uh, supplies situation of different country different route planning and things will get in place so of course it will be a time taking process uh, and uh, as we always say that uh, uh, with tough times you always have a better better uh, time coming up so with uh, the situational learning uh, system will adapt for new changes and start doing business in new manner that's what we expected to be and day to day discussions are going on that how to cop up and every day something or other are getting planned how to bring down the cost how to keep people engaged how to use the manpower for future those discussions are on okay all right thank you so uh, same question if we can direct to jay as well uh, if uh, you can uh, you know brief us uh, jay uh, on same questions plus the plan b every one is having a plan b but unfortunately uh, what i have witnessed is travel domain doesn't have a plan b right now so do you think technology has some role to play in between right so i think i can uh, specifically answer for the uh, event space i can try and attempt for the uh, you know travel domain right so i think uh, you know I'd, i'd also like to continue with what the other speakers were trying to say right so uh, what we are seeing is uh, across the market right even though you have uh, you know uh, businesses that have taken hit there is actually uh, quite a significant group of uh, businesses that are aggressively looking at uh, you know this uh, you know a situation that is going on right now right and what they can do about it you know with the new uh, technologies available to them right say virtual events virtual exhibitions and all that right so you know uh, and the scales at which they are looking to do it is mind boggling right you would think that 
you know people are trying to do it uh, you know of a scale of say few hundred or a few thousand but these are events that you know typically have tens of thousands of people that are coming for this event and they are you know going on online and they are looking to do it really aggressively in terms of you know being the first to do it sort of a thing right so that part is there uh with respect uh to travel right i mean uh you can't travel if you if uh, your uh, you know governments don't let you travel but there was a shift that was already happening in the travel sector what you saw is lot of the travel companies were also starting an events division right the, all the large ones they already have but even the smaller ones they started having that right because they saw that you know what maybe the margins are better this business model is good so they were starting to do that right so maybe this is an opportunity for the travel guys to uh, because events is a very adjacent market to theirs they can probably start exploring this you know till your restrictions come out right because at the end of the day you need to be able to generate revenue right if flights don't move then you can't do that but this is an adjacent space travel companies were moving so uh, you know this is an option for them uh, the third one is i think a couple of the panelists spoke about you know how the industry is going to evolve in terms of you know say the lost business on this year is going to go you know uh, in terms of 1.5 uh, times next year right the carry forward effect is going to happen but what's also going to happen uh, in our market is what i think i would like to call as my 3.0 is what is going to come out from this whole uh, epidemic that's happening right because businesses what we are seeing they are not you know sitting back and saying oh god you know uh, what are we going to do now sort of a thing right they are trying to figure out ways and once they figure out these new ways of doing businesses doing business uh, attendees sponsors exhibitors all of them are going to expect a lot more uh, after the uh, epidemic and they're going to be used to doing things you know with uh, in a high tech fashion right so i think my itself would change even after the epidemic all right thanks yeah so a lot of changes uh, we are expecting so uh, i'll just move on to the third uh, round where you know i would like to make it a more interactive one so where we are talking about various initiatives which we are taking at our own level so i'll start with myself first allow me this freedom so at myself's media where we have started this uh, share your key message campaign uh, among uh, i mean once this uh, situation started getting worse where we invited messages from various industry leaders and starting sharing with the database the people who were there maybe small or big time or medium time operators uh, from all verticals of my industry and uh, second step which we have taken right now is to establish a platform under our media uh, is the by the name of mice club so earlier we were planning it a mice club but uh, now we want to take it to next level this would be called, called mice build so this would be a community of professionals as well as companies across the domains of mice and across nations this is not limited to india so this would be having a global presence so we sharing uh, people opportunity to interact with international audience for mutual benefits even to share views and uh, opinions uh, under some difficult times or maybe to organize such kind of face to face interactions or give them some opportunity to attend some international shows going forward and uh, this would act as a proper i would say club or association which everyone is having so this would be under the media platform and uh, the idea is to bring people from all these four verticals together be it meeting be it meeting incentives conference or actions so the idea is to club mice together so this is what i have to say right now so in case someone of you uh, want to share their ideas uh, more than welcome and they can share it now so so jay we start with you or or we we have paul who wants to speak on this yeah paul i uh, yes thanks sachin uh, i commend your initiative and um uh, from our side at mash media in london we set up a community forum for the industry where they can join the debate raise their concerns share some tips we've also put some free areas where they can um advertise their services um without a charge uh, in these difficult times so that's a way of helping we're also very concerned to lobby our politicians on behalf of the industry because 
Uh, in our country, freelancers were forgotten in the, uh, the our chancellor's uh, raft of measures to help the economy and profession. So we managed to get them included and uh, by writing letters to the government on behalf of our industry. And I think something great really came out of this, that our politicians never really knew the value of our industry properly or where we stood. I'm talking about mice rather than broader tourism. They do lump us in with tourism, as you know. So I think uh, they do know now, not least because of all of our great venues turning themselves into hospitals, which is on the daily news. So when we do emerge from the other end, and uh, I share Ahmed's optimism, uh, you know, I think we will have strengthened our brand amongst the general public and amongst the politicians, and that's that's very important. Sure, thanks, Paul. Lovely to hear that. So anyone else uh, wants to speak something on this uh, subject, please? Stella, you have something to say? Yes, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, platform, uh, as you said, um, in my opinion, it's very, it's very useful, but uh, certainly uh, cannot replace the the connection, uh, the personal connection, and the and the exhibitions and the trade shows. Um, but uh, it would be a tool, uh, a helpful tool to keep, uh, to, I mean, uh, to, to, um, to keep out the distance. Uh, but um, I mean, platform, in my opinion, it is a tool that uh, it has to be in our, in our industry. Um, with uh, exhibitions or without, uh, it is uh, it is essential. Uh, it is essential tool. So no matter if we go and meet uh, the buyers and the sellers uh, in the exhibitions, the trade shows, the big or the small ones, it is essential. The, the platform it has to be to to work uh, on a permanent uh, basis uh, through the time through, through through the year. That's it. Okay. All right. Thank you, Stella. So, uh, any comments from Amit and Bindeshwari on uh, this Mice Club initiative, or maybe some initiative at your end also? Yeah, uh, I would like to say, uh, Sachin, uh, what you are uh, trying to do with the Mice Club, it's uh, going to be a great thing. But uh, in, uh, I would say, just the uh, industry should take it the way they should. Because uh, I know this is a tough time. People are talking that uh, some small small players will shut down the shop. But it's not that only with small players, it's with everyone. If you're talking about the big uh, companies as well, so they, they will suffer the same thing. So everybody is going to suffer in this. But uh, this club, what you're talking about, this can be a platform where everybody can share their views and, uh, and maybe uh, the ways forward for everyone, which is beneficial for everyone, not for uh, some particular individuals or uh, certain companies sure 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 of course so bindeshri ji if we can hear yeah. something from you on this so sachin it's always uh, good to have uh, means normally uh, when we were in normal days uh, people were not having time and uh, everyone was too busy uh, most yeah. of the time so uh, i think this is a time uh, where uh, if you are bringing this platform uh, it, it will help uh, working on different kind of uh, structure even this is if if you say like I, as paul said that uh, in uk uh, the government has been quite supportive and uh, uh, industry uh, this kind of bodies has helped people uh, getting benefited so uh, this mice club uh, can work work out uh, different uh, strategies discuss different strategies to uh, betterment of uh, people interaction and even uh, a, a different kind of uh, opportunities for the people in the industry so i think it's a good initiative done by you sure 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 thank you so uh, can we hear it from jay also jay if you can speak uh, you know brief us on the mice club and uh, 
you know clubbing it with the technology if you can share some information on that uh yes Eugene. i think uh, it's a great initiative and you know we are uh, you know glad to be supporting you and especially uh you know in uh, line with what stella said right this shouldn't be a one off thing but a year round thing right so and that's exactly what you know when uh, we were discussing it we said that should be the intent right and we are you know figuring out ways of how to do that so yes absolutely right this is going to be a year round thing and i think this is an opportunity right and it is an excuse right to uh, do something like this that the mice community comes together and we are only going to be stronger together right so uh, yeah and and also i think uh, from our side right there might be you know uh, some lack of clarity on you know what we mean by what technology uh, can do right whatever we have been you know speaking about in bits and pieces so yeah if if you have say you know two and a half to three minutes i can just run you through a quick presentation just let me know whenever you you know want me to jump in with that i think uh, it's a good time to continue with that if uh, you can take us through that sure so i'm i'm just going to share my uh, screen with you I'll, i'll i'll run a little quickly on this one right but i want to give you uh, you know a high level overview of you know what we are uh, talking about right uh, pivot to what we what do you mean by that right uh, so this particular uh, uh, you know talk whatever i'm going to talk about next one half three minutes uh, it's going to be applicable for event organizers associations pcos event management companies if you're an av guy digital marketing agency uh, if you're a hotel convention center Uh, or you know uh, event exhibitors right all these groups have been affected and i think the technology that i'm going to uh, talk about is going to be relevant uh, for you know all of you uh, and i think before i start over here right what i need to uh, tell is that the playing field might have changed but the skills that the players you guys what you have that is very much applicable even now right so as uh, say event organizers right problem solving project management right that's something that you do that's your bread and butter right uh, that's still required innovativeness right the brand that you already have right that is going to be extremely critical in whatever pivot you do right even if you do a virtual event all this is going to come in very handy right your followers your databases your customers uh if you're an av guy audio visual uh you know as you would figure out is still very important even for uh, virtual events right digital marketing production design all these skills are going to uh, you know come into play right all that is needed is a little uh, you know a mindset shift uh and you know before i talk about anything i think i should start off with a couple of case studies so that uh, you know this is not hot air this is actually been done right so you know couple of events right so you have uh, collision conf right uh, it's i think about it's uh, it runs in canada there are about 30000 people that come in every year they have gone completely virtual but the interesting thing that they have done is they said that you know what we are going to charge the same amount what we were charging for our uh, physical event and that's because you know what you come for an event uh, for the high quality content right and i'm still providing you that you come for the event for the networking that you want right and i'm going to give you that and probably a lot more right with the virtual event then why should i be charging you less right so collision conf is doing that then you have another uh, you know uh, event organizers called uh, practically perfect uh, pa and what they did is uh, they run physical events and their virtual equivalents and what they saw is their physical event does something like uh, Uh, you know, ten thousand dollars in revenue. So it, there's a typo over here. It's ten thousand dollars in revenue per event. It's a smaller event, and they do the same event virtually. They do about four installments of each, uh, of each, and that does about you know twenty k per uh, virtual event, right? So they end up making eighty k on the virtual events, eighty thousand dollars, and say about ten thousand dollars on the physical event, right? So these are real events that have actually not just taken an event virtual, but also monetized it way more. then uh, say a physical counterpart right so this is serious business right so i i just want to you know give quick background about you know who we are right so we are basically a event technology company and our technology powers physical events hybrid events and also uh, virtual events right uh, and i'm i'm going to just run it like a story right so uh, when we started off we basically wanted to help uh, event organizers right physical event organizers and typical issues they face right managing an event uh, managing attendees sponsors profitability all of that uh, these are, are the issues that they face right uh, so you know we created uh, an award winning platform that's you know powered uh, really large events across the globe right uh, 
and uh, you know there are things that you know you might or might not have heard of for example making revenue of uh, you know the uh, hotel bookings that uh, come through your attendees right or the flight bookings you can actually make revenue out of that right uh, and you know we are gdpr compliant all those things right and uh, then what happened is that uh, the economy actually started slowing down. I'm pretty sure you're aware of that, even before COVID, right? So you had lower budgets. So events actually already started, you know, pivoting to virtual events. And a lot of virtual events were, I mean, physical events were being run as hybrid events, right? That is physical plus virtual, right? So the econ uh, so you already had early movers before COVID that were, you know, trying this out. Um, so what we did is, you know, we used the platform that we had already built to power large physical events. And we, you know, built it for virtual events, right? Uh, you know, taking into uh, uh, consideration what a virtual event uh, would require, right? So, what our attendees would have seen in this uh, particular uh, you know, uh, a virtual event is, say, ten percent of the platform, right? Because this is basically like a panel discussion you know, that's happening at short notice. And you know, I'm, I'm just uh, going to share the screen, you know, for some people that might not have seen, you know, how this event is being run, right? So, for example, this is the speaker view. Uh, this is the page where the attendees come. They can see the different sessions that are running, right? They can enter them, right? And then the attendees enter this particular page, right? Where uh, you know there is a chat board for them to interact with each other. And on the right, they can interact with the speakers through a uh, you know a Twitter feed uh, interface, right? But this again is just about ten percent of the platform, right? So. What we are talking about is, uh, you know, uh, everything that you are looking to do in a physical event, you can do it virtually, right? And uh, some of it, uh, you know, even our panelists had uh, mentioned a while back, right? And then what happened? You had COVID, so you had wide-scale cancellations and panic, right? So the same technology now comes to the forefront, right? So uh, while before, uh, say, virtual events might have been, you know, 10% uh, of, uh, you know, the requirements that's coming in, now it is the majority of the uh, requirements, the inbound requirements that are coming in are for the virtual events, right? And these are huge events that are looking to go virtual, right? Now is the key part, right? Uh, I'm going to take probably another uh, minute and a half or so, right? So what I'm trying to tell is when you run an event, there are three or four main aspects you could think about. One is your content and the engagement, right? You need to provide them at a world-class level. You need to give your uh, management of your event, the promotion of your event, that's the other aspect. And then the business value that you provide to exhibitors and sponsors, that's the third uh, factor. And then obviously you need to make money out of it, right? So these are the main pillars that you need to focus on, right? So with a virtual events platform, you can have a panel discussion, you can have parallel sessions that are running, right? Uh, you can have an interactive session. You can have a simulated session. So for example, one of the panelists, right, Mr. Om Prakash Kurun Tham, so he just sent a video, and we were able to play it uh, you know, live, right? Uh, and that went uh, pretty smoothly, right? And you know, there's no limit uh, on an audience, right? There's no geographic uh, limitation that's there. Attendees can be engaged. You can have live attendee networking. So over here, you saw uh, you know, many to many interaction, but you also have, say, a mobile app based one to one chat based interaction that can happen, live polling, QA, gamification, social wall. You can have post speaker, post session speaker interaction, right? For example, uh, when you go to a particular conference, you want to interact with the speakers after the event, right? Just when they are getting off the stage, right? Now, how do you uh, simulate that for a virtual event, right? So we have the ability to do that, right? Uh, and then, obviously, when it comes to managing your event, promoting your event, right? The product that we give, you know, lets you handle your, uh, you know, email marketing and uh, you know affiliate tracking. All of that gets taken care of. Your virtual venue management, virtual stage management, right? And uh, that's basically it. And in terms of exhibitors, right? Uh, there, basically. You can have unlimited number of exhibitors that are showcasing their products online. They can have videos, PPTs, and you can have a live one-on-one -on -one video interaction between the exhibitor and the uh, you know the attendee uh, for that particular event, right? And uh, you know all of this can happen without any limitations in uh, geography, right? So and then you obviously had the attendee networking that is there, and then uh, for sponsors, you know similar to what uh, say Stella was saying, uh, you can have build a year-round community, right? Because what you're looking to do for a sponsor is not just have an audience forum for three days, but for the 
year round, right? And that is possible using these technologies, right? And you're going to have access to them on web, mobile, email, you know, all of it, right? So, uh, and in terms of revenue, you have multiple opportunities, video ads, static ads, uh, sponsored polls, sponsored contests, uh, the same uh, content that you're running for a particular event using, say, the simulated event feature, you can rerun it and re-monetize it, right? With a live audience, right? So all that is possible, right? And merchandise sales. So all of this is there. So uh, in closing, what I'm going to say is once exhibitors, sponsors, attendees, right, they figure out that, you know what, I'm getting the same amount of business value. Uh, you know, uh, my knowledge upgrade is happening to the same level while I can sit on my couch, right, and spend, say, one one tenth or one hundredth of what I would spend otherwise, right? Uh, you know, why should I do things the old way, right? Because people have been forced to do things this way, right? So what's going to happen after this is absolutely uh, physical events are not, uh, you know, going to die. They are, they are definitely going to be there, but you're also going to see that, uh, you know, virtual events are going to happen at a scale never seen before, and you are probably not going to have a physical event without a virtual component, right? Which is say a hybrid event, right? So uh, in closing, right, action required. If you are an event organizer, right, that is having a lot of event cancellations, talk to your customers, right, tell them this can be converted into a virtual event. I can give you 10 times more value than what you would have had with a physical event, right? You can propose new virtual event series to all your stakeholders, right? If you work with the governments, you know, uh, like our uh, panelists from the UK were saying, you know, the government is starting to realize the value of mice. And, you know, the way you do that, industries you actually need these events to happen because this acts these events acts as uh, an oil or a lubricant for these industries right so you propose new events there digital uh, marketing agencies av guys right you can upsell these technologies partner with guys like us hotels convention centers if you have cancelled events you can actually run virtual events under your brand right so imagine a high art uh, branded virtual event right all that is possible right so that's basically it i'd like to close it uh, you know if you so we could have a detailed session for people that are interested that would like to you know, look under the hood to figure out exactly what it takes to run a, a virtual event. You know, these are some of our uh, contacts, and uh, yeah, these are uh, you know challenging times, but I think there is opportunity if you look. So yes, uh, you know, best of luck all. Okay, sure. Thanks, Jeff. So uh, I think our questions are finished. So in this round, we are taking uh, certain questions from the audience. So the first question is coming in uh, for Paul. Paul, there is a question from you from uh, Farni Sangsan from Thailand. So the question goes, when will you expect Indian exhibition industry to bounce back? Any predictions on that? Well, a lot of it depends um, I think, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. A lot of it depends on your market, not just your own country. If you take uh, China, we heard that Shen Shenyang, second tier city, was given government approval to run exhibitions. But 30% of the attendees and exhibitors were international. So they asked the other 70% of locals whether it was still worth going ahead. And they thought maybe it wasn't because uh, they needed that interaction. So I think you have to think of where your buyers maybe are coming from. And to Stella's point about the meeting show, you know, the um, it's all about the hosted buyers, which is why IMEX had to cancel, because uh, you have to let these people have a good run up to plan. It's not just about the physical exhibition, but about the buyers. Um, as far as India goes, I would defer to you, Sachin, and your colleagues. You, you have your ear to the ground in that market, although I did listen to an UFI webinar last week where um, some of your colleagues mentioned that uh, they were hopeful for the autumn season uh, that would kick back in uh, uh, in India. So let's hope that happens, and, and uh, I wish you luck. Sure, sure. Thanks, Paul, for answering that question. Then we have another question, which is on the MICE perspective. And uh, there's someone uh, asking about this question. In is uh, how are the corporates responding uh, about their plans? What are their plans? Uh, if uh, Amit or Bindeshri can take that question, please. Uh, see, Sachin, uh, what uh, I would like to answer to this question is it's too early to say anything. Like uh, there are uh, there were events which were scheduled this year, uh, so many of the corporates have uh, deferred it, and uh, some are even so worried about the entire thing that they have cancelled it. 
so till the time this thing settles down till the time we are out of this epidemic or we see a ray of hope yet it's going down 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 so it's really hard to say that uh, the corporate will start uh, to move forward uh, for their planned events but yes uh, they are we are still talking to them we are in regular touch with them because that's what uh, it's very much required right now for a better planning when we are back into the action all right thank you so bindeshwari what is uh, your feedback uh, from your corporates mostly mostly as of now people are i um, mean not sure so most of the things are getting postponed and uh, very few of them has said that it's getting cancelled so all all are waiting for so they are talking on regular terms and then maybe uh, april mid after of some more results will start coming on that what what is the call all right so that means everyone is following that hashtag don't yeah. cancel but postpone right yeah as well. <laughs> okay so uh, there is one question i think stella should answer that uh, stella can you hear me yes i can so there is a question called uh, i mean uh, they are asking is there any advice for the hotels or destinations to build that craze how should hotels and destination should react and act on this situation yes okay so um hotels <clears throat> has uh, to to understand this new this change of course and um, to focus first of all on the human aspect of uh, of service uh so first of all they have to to clean very well uh, the the hotels the rooms they have to to form a new approach of uh, housekeeping actually service to um to educate the staff very well uh, about the hygiene uh, terms and conditions um there is, there are a lot of uh, of things that we cannot answer on this uh, on these uh, webinars uh, but um it is um, essential uh, to to focus on education and to, to restart with a new uh a new new perspective so because uh, the the question after all is uh, to all of us uh, how to choose destinations from now on it used to be a question in the past uh, and but uh, from now on it is um, it is a critical one uh, i mean how to choose destinations why to to choose uh, the certain destinations and actually destinations has to i mean are always relevant uh, with uh, the hotel uh, the hotel infrastructure okay this is very 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 important so in my opinion um uh, the not big 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 destinations not the huge uh, cities uh, it would be preferable uh, um in order to avoid all this crowded um, crowded uh, transportation and uh, crowded uh, hotels or crowded um, a uh, meeting uh, space etc so i think that uh, restart uh, it it is um is going to be uh, little by little okay so and um, those uh, destinations are are um, uh, more uh, close to nature i think that it would be more preferable most more uh, preferable 
uh, and it actually I express my 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 my, my opinion and my personal uh, actually <laughs> approach in order to place uh, meetings and events because so far so far for me it is it is it is really uh, uh, this question in into my mind and into my plans uh, where to go where to place the next event uh, and this is this is I didn't get the answer yet, uh, believe me, because it's not only actually the hotels, but it's also the airlines. It's also, um, I mean, airlines and hotels, of course, are the the basic, the basic. So both they have to to follow the very, very, very high um, H&M. Um, uh, uh, terms and conditions uh, because this is this is very important uh, health uh, it's the first priority now i think to all of us thank you sure sure thank you stella so uh, another so we have just two questions left so quickly we'll take this uh, the other one is uh, do you think virtual event is more effective for b2b cases than b2c so who would like to answer this jay or... I, I can take this yeah so i think you know it, this is a great question right? so when it comes to b2b events i think the fit with virtual events is very obvious but there is also a great fit with uh, b2c and i tell you how right so for example um, so b2b and b2c uh, one is maybe you know the uh, scale at which uh, the events are done might be you know uh, very different right uh, but you know with the technologies that are available you can actually have you know, billions of people that are uh, you know interacting with uh, brands with the uh, event right uh, the second thing is b2c events you have to uh, you know people go in there for activities for the experiences the feel of a brand right versus say meeting executives that happens in a b2b event right and all these things can actually be uh, still done uh, you know online right through say gamification right activities and stuff like that right now you have a third component when i go to a uh, you know b2c event i might be able to test samples and stuff like that right or you know experience a particular thing how am i going to do that right that also is possible, right? So a uh, simple example is, you know, someone was saying, you know, when you convert a physical event into a virtual event, uh, why don't you uh, send those guys an Uber Eat uh, package during the lunch time, right? Now, if you can send an Uber Eat package, uh, and basically how you're doing that is because, you know, you, you don't have a venue cost anymore, right? You don't have all those operational costs that are there. That you can actually redirect for these experiences, right? So if you can send them Uber Eats, why can't you send them, say, you know, samples from your businesses, right? You start engaging with these people before an event, and then you can actually send them samples that they can try out, right? And then there are other experiences through, say, you know, augmented reality, virtual reality that, you know, if you apply yourself, you know, might be uh, possible. And I think the last one is, say, interaction between uh, executives, right, a business interaction versus, uh, uh, you know, uh, attendee community-based interaction that is required in a B2C uh, event, like, say, a concert or something, right? And both these different types of interactions are possible uh, with the technologies that are available, right? You go to a concert, there are technologies available to interact with other fans that are there, right? Uh, so it doesn't really have to be a B2B sort of a meeting setup. So all this is possible, but more creativity is required. Sure. Thanks, Jay. So uh, the last question, uh, this one coming from uh, uh, Gagan Sharma, and the question is for the mice industry uh, that after this epidemic, uh, he's thinking that suppliers, that is hotels or airlines, they may increase the prices to cover up their losses or the time which has gone. So maybe it can be another hit to the mice business. So Amitji, would you like to say something on this? Yeah, I would like to add on to that. Uh, Sachin, yeah. this is uh, supposed to happen. See, uh, currently, uh, if we talk about the cancellations and the postponement, not all the hotels are flexible to roll over the deposits which already been paid to them. Some of them are still stuck. Okay, like you have sent me a cancellation on a particular date, but after the date you have sent cancellation, we face a lockdown after a week. So still your cancellation policies are applicable as per the contract one situation second is some hotels are very good very cooperative in such situations they are even rolling over the deposits till next year till mid of next year that means i'm talking mm -hmm. about uh, like uh, the event which was supposed to happen in may they're having a time window till june next year 
June 2021 to have the event and the deposit secured with them. The contract conditions remains the same except the validity. Of course, there is a clause. The rates might vary when you come up with the new dates. So this is going to happen. The prices will go up. The airlines, whatever revenue they have lost in these in these days, they will try to cover it up when things come back on track. So is everyone, all the vendors, all the suppliers. So it's basically it's going to be a very awkward situation for all the mice operators uh, when we're sitting in front of the client because uh, the product which will be anyways uh, will go higher by 10 to 20 percent when it uh, comes to their tables. Yeah, and which, which, which will be, which will be applicable everywhere, not only in travel industry. Even uh, when the other industries come back on track, their uh, logistics, everything, all the costs will go up. So they have to raise the prices. Okay. So, Paul, uh, do you have something to say on this? Does does this apply on ab exhibition industry as well? Do you think so? I, I would just add that, um, of course, there's supply and demand, and the usual laws will apply again. Uh, but it will be very easy to see in our increasingly transparent world who is actually profiteering and trying to take people for a ride and where those costs are justified because there's a lot of forums now where people are looking at who really is together strong and who is trying to act like a snake oil salesman and selling things we don't need and uh, trying to profiteer so i think um, uh, there will be some uh, not so many places to hide but of course there will be shortages and, um, you know, certainly in the airline industry and hotels, uh, they'll, if exhibitions pile into that third and fourth quarter, then of course there will be pressure on those services and that, that will be understandable to an extent. But what is not understandable or forgivable are people who will try to profiteer and I think they will be found out. All right, thank you. So I'll take the last reaction on the same question from Bindeshwari on this. So, Sachin, uh, uh, of course, I mean, uh, I have a different take. It, it always, uh, market is always driven by demand and supply. So, it depends how the demand is at that time and what kind of supply is based on that the market will move. It will not be that airlines will increase and if somebody is not having money to say, and if it is not, uh, people are not able to sell it. So, if demand is not that much, airlines cannot uh, demand a higher price. So, uh, to sustain a business, it has to be work hand in hand, and it will be up always with demand and supply. All right. Okay. So I think with that, uh, I think most of the questions are answered. In case uh, we have more, uh, then uh, we can email it to various uh, panelists today, and uh, you can rush us, uh, rush us with your answers and emails, and uh, we can supply it back to uh, the various persons who are asking these questions. So let me take this opportunity to thank everyone out there who have taken out time to join us for this session. And um, I'm sure uh, we'll catch up soon at some other platform and with some different uh, subject and objectives.